Israel's military has resumed combat operations in Gaza after a ceasefire expired overnight. Israel claims Hamas violated the truth, the truce rather, firing rockets towards Israeli territory. The U.N. has called the resumption of hostilities, quote, catastrophic. This after Hamas released eight Israeli hostages yesterday in exchange for 30 Palestinian prisoners. Lily Luciano has more from Israel. We are about a mile and a half away from the Gaza border, and this morning, as we've been standing here, we've been hearing jets. We are seeing a lot of military vehicles pass through, and you might be able to catch, we just saw a little bit of it, uh, some of the smoke from the Israeli airstrikes onto Gaza. But despite all of this, we hear from negotiators that the talks to resume the ceasefire are still ongoing. The ceasefire is over. In Gaza, war again rages, and with it, destruction, despair, and death. We were collecting water to wash our clothes as the bombing started, says Omar Haruz in southern Gaza. He can't find his family. You're helping us achieve what we strive for. We seek martyrdom. This is what we want. May Allah bring his vengeance upon you. We are not afraid of you. Among the dozens of dead in just the first hours, according to the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry, many are women and children. In Tel Aviv last night, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said he stressed to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu the way Israel defends itself matters. I made clear that before Israel resumes major military operations, it must put in place humanitarian civilian protection plans that minimize further casualties of innocent Palestinians. The Israeli military says they've dropped leaflets in Gaza and shared an online map of designated civilian areas outside of the line of fire. As indignation grows over allegations Israel dismissed intelligence, the New York Times today reporting more details of a blueprint for the October 7th attack allegedly provided to officials. One IDF soldier who observed unusual Hamas activity leading up to the attack tells CBS News today she assumes her cautions were ignored because we're the small soldiers, we're the simple soldiers. While the families of the remaining hostages and worried Israelis wait, knowing those left behind in captivity are now possibly stuck in the crossfire. I'm really worried about that because I know it's a must. It should continue, but on the other hand, uh, all the hostages are in real danger. That soldier we talked to was telling me that for a long time, she had witnessed, she had documented and conveyed unusual Hamas activity on the other side of the border, and that many of those soldiers, who were mostly women, who were carrying out the surveillance and communicating it, were among the first slaughtered on October 7th when Hamas breached the border. Anne-Marie, Vlad. Lilia, thank you. So joining us now with the latest from Jerusalem is CBS News foreign correspondent Chris Livesey. Uh, Chris, first off, just bring us up to speed. What is the situation like there today? Hey, Anne-Marie. Well, uh, you know, as Lily has said, the, uh, the the sad situation is that this very tenuous peace that lasted for the previous seven days has now been broken. We're no longer seeing the exchange of Israeli hostages for Palestinian prisoners, and instead we're seeing the exchange of uh, Hamas rockets for Israeli airstrikes. Those airstrikes seem to be concentrated in southern Gaza. Uh, people in the city of Khan Yunis, long suspected to be the nucleus, the, the main command center of Hamas, have been receiving warnings from Israeli Defense Forces to evacuate the area. Also, as Lilia mentioned, uh, the Israeli Defense Forces have published online maps uh, to give uh, Gazans an opportunity to flee the areas that, that might be targeted. They've been uh, distributing leaflets uh, through the air, also giving people a chance to evacuate southern Gaza. But, uh, you know, just yesterday in those same meetings that we saw between Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, uh, in which uh, Blinken uh, cautioned the Israelis about minimizing the loss of civilian life. Uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also uh, swore to, uh, uh, to Secretary Blinken that the war would resume and that Israel would eradicate Hamas, and we appear to be seeing the, the resumption of that operation. So then, you know, what are both sides saying about the ceasefire? Uh, you know, it, there was an option for the ceasefire to be extended to 10 days as long as the hostages were continuing to be released. What happened? 
Yeah, just last night, Qatari sources told us, told CBS News, that negotiations to extend that ceasefire were, were hopeful. Um, and unfortunately, that, that didn't appear to be the case. The Israelis say that they were getting shortchanged in this truce. You know, they were not getting the number of hostages that Hamas had vowed to mm -hmm. produce. They wanted a number of women to be let out. Hamas says that those women weren't just women. They were actually soldiers, and they've made it very clear that they're not going to release any any men or soldiers until Israel says it's willing to release all Palestinians uh, that are in their prisons. And so they appear to be at loggerheads over that. Yeah, that sounds like, uh, yeah, not what's not going to be a successful negotiation for sure. I, I, so what happens now with the humanitarian aid that had finally been coming into Gaza? It still was nowhere near enough, but I presume now it's ground to a halt. Yeah, it has ground to a halt. We can confirm that. You know, I spent weeks in Egypt monitoring the comings and goings at this crossing. You know, it, it, the crossing into Egypt is the only uh, available crossing uh, at this time. The uh, For the past seven days, uh, it has been open. That meant that hospitals have been able to replenish their stock of, of medicine, that uh, aid groups have been able to replenish their stocks of food and water. So that is no longer happening uh, right now. Um, Israel is very careful, very weary of anything that comes across that border for the fear that it could wind up in the hands of Hamas and be used to sustain them in this what appears to be a, a very long and, and grinding war. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Well, the New York Times is reporting Israeli officials learned about Hamas's plan for the October 7th terror attack more than a year in advance. According to the Times, Israel obtained a 40-page document outlining the group's strategy for the attack. It did not specify a date. Israeli intelligence officials reportedly dismissed the plan as aspirational. It's unclear if Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu saw the document himself. The Israeli military declined to comment on the New York Times report. And earlier, I spoke about the report with a senior fellow for Middle East and Africa Studies at the Council for Foreign Relations. Intelligence failures are also failures of political, almost always failures of political leadership and political leadership unable uh, to make the connections that the intelligence analysts are, are giving them uh, or they have some other political constraint or incentive mm -hmm. to ignore what the intelligence community is giving them. Remember, uh, we had a, a, a massive failure on 9-11 in 2001, yet the intelligence community indicated without having a date saying that al-Qaeda was determined to strike the United States. Mm -hmm. Way back in 2018, the Israeli defense minister, uh, a guy named Avigdor Lieberman, uh, made the case that Hamas was planning to attack inside of Israel and was also dismissed, leading to his resignation. Mm -hmm. So um, there's been ample, ample warnings about what might be coming, yet um, the senior leadership of, uh, of, the, of the government, as well as the Israel Defense Forces and Intelligence Services there, have chosen to ignore it because they became complacent and had their own sense of what Hamas was capable of, rather than listening to the people around them. You know, I was going to ask you if we can expect major changes. I, I, I guess that's obvious, but it's just that we, it's hard to determine where things will go from here when we're still in the middle of this conflict. That's right. I, it's certainly when this horrible war comes to an end, there's likely to be a very significant political reckoning uh, within within Israel, undoubtedly the case.